This is Kate Crowley from Teachers College, Columbia University here in New York City in the program of Speech Language Pathology. In this module 4.2, we're going to look at what the speech therapist can do to help develop the baby's speech before the cleft palate is repaired so that less speech therapy is needed after that happens. Now this is not just for babies, but for older people um, who are you know, three, four, five years old who might be waiting for a cleft palate repair for one reason or another. What can be done so that less speech therapy is needed after the surgery happens? The vocal tract is made up of a system of valves that alter the airstream coming from the lungs. We have the glottis, where glottal stops are produced. We have the velopharyngeal region, which is where your velum or your soft palate closes. And we have the oral region, which is comprised of the movement of the lips for m, p, b, the tongue, which is important for t, d, n, l, s, and the jaw. Speech production is pressure driven. Other regions may compensate for a loss of pressure and may lead to velopharyngeal dysfunction. Now we are going to discuss early vocal development for all babies, those who have a cleft palate and those without a cleft palate. Prior to six months of age, early vocalizations are produced in the pharynx and glottis. By six months of age, differences are observed. Typically developing infants begin producing more anterior, labial, and alveolar consonants. For example, bilabials, m, p, b, and alveolars, t, d, and n. Sounds move forward from the throat and into the mouth. So there is an effect of cleft palate on early vocal development. These children who have a cleft palate cannot produce sounds requiring lingual palatal contact, such as the n, k, and ga. They cannot direct airflow through the mouth, leading to distortions of early stop consonants such as the b and d. They are likely to have chronic middle ear infections affecting their ability to hear sounds because of the tensor villi palatini muscle that may not be functioning due to improper insertion. Infants with unrepaired cleft palate have glottal productions which persist. So instead of typical babbling which may include ba ba ba, da da da, they continue to make sounds such as a ah, a ah, a ah, or ha ha ha. Few, if any, alveolar or palatal phonemes are produced. Fewer total number of variety of consonants. Phonemic repertoire such as nasals and glides and glottals are primarily what they use. And fewer multisyllabic productions. So what can we do before the cleft palate is repaired to improve speech outcomes after the surgery? Well, the first is to reinforce babbling using sounds the baby can make correctly. And if you've been watching our video tutorials, you will know already that babies with cl open cleft palates can make the mmm, mmm, mmm sounds and the w, l, y sounds and the vowels. So we can vocal play back and forth with ya, 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 da, ma, 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 na, 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 wa, 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 those sounds the baby can make and then we can engage in vocal play, but the baby won't be frustrated because the baby can't imitate the sound the adult is making. If the baby babbles with sounds that are not part of the language, such as in English with glottal stops or sounds made in the back of the throat like the pharyngeal fricatives or the pharyngeal stops, smile and babble back with the sounds the baby can make, like Na 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 na, yi gi ya ya yi, na ne na ne, wa wa wu 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 wu. Eventually, the baby will respond with the sounds the parent makes. If you babble back with the sounds the baby's making that are going to be more difficult to deal with after the cleft palate is repaired, like say the baby is going ka 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 ka, and you do ka, isn't that an adorable sound? You're going to reinforce the sounds that baby the that that are only being made by the baby because the baby at that point doesn't have the anatomical or physiological abilities to make those sounds. Also, you want to reinforce language. Have fun with language with your baby as you would with any other child. Remember, these babies are really no more delicate than other children. Sometimes they mean, need more communication interactions with the parents so their language develops well. Use functional vocabulary. Have, use words that the 
with speech sounds that the child can make. Here's some examples. Mommy, me, my, more, man, mine, no, nana, ear, hair, eye, arm, knee, in, moon, ring, new, moon, noon, moo, meow, wow, wow, wow. The dog bark, roar, or the lion or the car sound, ma, the lamb sound, mini, you, yay, yo, 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 lamb all those kinds of sounds. There's many, many sounds that we can use that have within words that the child would have a delightful time working with you on. Focus on the correct placement of the sounds, even if the child cannot create the oral airflow. So for example, because there's a cleft palate there, the child can't do those high pressure sounds. So if you're gonna use the word cookie, I'd rather go nyonyi, Nyonyi, or I want a nyonyi. The ny is like the last sound in ring and sing. So the child can make the mmm, and the, when the child has the cleft palate repaired and can make those high pressure sounds, they might be able to make the cookie then. But before the palate's repaired, can't do it. Impossible. Next, we'll see a little girl who's had her palate lip repaired, but is waiting for her cleft palate surgery. Her speech pathologist has been focusing on placement of her sounds. Before the speech pathologist started working with her, the, the child used glottal stops for almost all high pressure sounds. The pa, ba, ta, da, ga, ga, sh, sh, ch, and j. Now that she's been working with her speech therapist before the surgery, her intelligibility has increased. By moving all of the throat sounds or glottal stops to more anterior position, her friends and family are better able to understand her. So for example, I'm gonna say this sentence using all glottal stops. Now, it's hard to understand. I said, can you understand what I am saying? Now I'm going to say it with correct placement, but with my soft palate down as if I had an unrepaired cleft palate. Can you understand what I am saying? Here's the glottal stop one. Now you can sort of get it because now you know what's happening, what I was saying. You have the context. But the other way, can you understand what I am saying? You can get it. Let's do it again. Count from one to ten. One, u, e, or, i, e, m, e, nine n that's with glottal stops here's with correct placement one new three four five six seven eight nine n so i can't make the high pressure sounds but boy with good placement my intelligibility goes way up so this girl they were using appropriate placement to increase her intelligibility and when she has her palate repair which she's going to have at the age of six very soon. She will then have much less speech therapy that she's going to need after surgery as well. How would you say that sound? Mum. Mm hmm Popeye. Mumpai. Wow. Puppy will pull a rope. Mum will mow a rope. Very nice. Beautiful. Next sound right here. Ba. No. Mm -hmm. uh, Bobby. Mommy. Put your hand down so we can see yeah, it. Yeah, we want to see that, those lips look good. Mommy. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Bye, baby, a bib. Bye. Let me say it again. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What? <laughs> that was really good. Now I have some special word for dear fathers of these children. It always seems to be a bit of a competition for whether the children, the babies are going to say mommy or daddy or papi. The bad news is with children with cleft palate, they're going to say mommy first because those are nasal sounds. Before the palate is repaired, they can't make the d or the pa, which are high pressure sounds. So dads, you're going to have to wait to hear daddy until the cleft palate is repaired. Sometimes we, the baby, the family says, oh, the baby says, ah-e, their glottal stops. And so the father becomes ah-e, ah-e, and then the palate is repaired. And it's much harder to change that. 
So what I would suggest, if you go by daddy, just change it to the nasal, nanny. So daddy, nanny. Or if you're papi, you could be mommy until the palate is repaired. Be patient, fathers or nannies or mommies, because after the surgery, if you're patient, you will hear daddy or papi. This concludes module 4.2, looking at what to do with a baby and a child before the cleft palate is repaired. Again, this and all materials is available at leadersproject.org. In module five, we will discuss syndromes.